What is going on YouTube? You tuned back into another episode of Lock Valley Farms. Now, as you guys can see, we have got cars everywhere here today. And that is because we are crutching some of our sheep. Now, for you guys who don't know what crutching is, it's basically just shearing around the bums of the sheep, tidying them up, making sure there's no poop or anything around there. It's not such a big problem at this time of the year, but especially when it gets hot and the flies come back, we want to keep the flies away. So, everybody likes a clean bum, so we're in there doing that in the shed at the moment. I am helping, we have a lovely neighbour here, a very helpful neighbour who is um, out spreading some fertiliser for us and oh, Dad's getting ready to go and spray a few more bugs. Found one of the uh, paddocks out at Blayley North, um, the clover and that in there in the pasture is getting destroyed by bugs so he's going to do that. I'm helping um, the neighbour uh, fill up and move around and we're just spreading, we're trying to cover a lot of ground, spreading fertiliser today and tomorrow morning because we're expecting a bit of rain so we want that rain, especially on urea straight after we spread it to wash it into the soil and make it available for the plant, otherwise it's fairly volatile I believe and it, it, um, it, it loses its sort of strength if it just sits there on, on the top of the soil. So trying to get that done. Um, yeah, she's all go guys, she's all go. Might as well. I reckon we might start off in the shearing shed today, but I've got to wait here in a sec. I've got the spreader coming back in a sec. I've got to top him up. Rightio, he is loaded out of here. Uh, we're just spreading fertilizer on the sheep feed to start with. Uh, we're not spreading urea on the sheep feed, we're spreading DAP, which is a blended fertilizer. Uh, we will save the urea for the barley. Uh, the barley is on, on very, very heavy wheat stubbles from last year, so they're gonna need a lot of juice this year to get through because, yeah, those big wheat crops sucked out a lot of uh, juice out of the soil last year so we'll save the urea for that in the meantime I've got a bit of time to kill let's go and have a look at what's going on in the shearing shed look at those freshly shorn bums just around the bums and then up over the face get all the wool out the way tidy them up we'll see them back when they're ready for shearing That is enough of that for now. I've got to go help or deliver some fertilizer. Alrighty, I've just topped him up again. I was a bit behind the eight ball. <laughs> he was waiting for me, but uh, that's all right. He's topped up, ready to go again. And I think I need to stand a little bit further back because when he started up and that fertilizer started coming out, he was a long way away and it was still hitting the truck. <laughs> Now, if you're just wondering, Henry, why don't you guys have your own spreader? Why don't you do your own spreading well? We are actually in the market for a spreader at the moment. We're seriously looking at um, a Marshall spreader, a, a new one. They're not cheap though, that's the thing. And we left our run a little bit too late this year. By the time we wanted to order one, 
um, yeah, we wouldn't have got it in time. So we just stick with uh, getting the neighbours in to do it. Um, they just contract for us and do it. They do a good job. It's simple. It's easy. We just run a bit of fertiliser around to them. Maybe next year we might have our own spreader. So that might be the plan then. I'm risking my eyeballs here trying to get footage of this. I hope you guys appreciate this. <laughs> I don't think I'll get too much. Stepping back. <laughs> 36 meter spread on that, so you gotta stay away. Otherwise you might take a bit of fertilizer to the eye. <laughs> Refill time. Rightio, that is another field done. And we are starting to get a lovely little bit of sunshine at the moment, which is beautiful. So I'm gonna head back to the farm now. I'm gonna switch over the auger into the urea bin and we will start spreading urea on the barley. Got a problem. That hopper does not fit under that silo, which has got about 10 ton of urea in it. So I'm gonna need a shovel. I'm gonna have to shovel it out. That is about all the urea we have here, but we are actually expecting the last of it to come in a truck today. So perfect timing. Hopefully we can get it all spread. We're expecting pretty much rain every single day this week, apart from today. Mmm, I'm gonna have to go for a drive to get a shovel. Again, I was pretty well behind the eight ball. Got the auger in and just as I got it in, he's pulling up ready to fill up. So I'm just gonna run up and open some gates for him now. Alrighty, so I just thought, while I am out here at this barley, I'm gonna show you guys exactly why we are spreading this so early, all right? So I don't know whether the camera will pick this up particularly well, but you see the tips of the leaves are looking quite nice and green. As you come down the stem, it's looking a little bit pale. Just not quite as green and lush looking as you might like. Um, now the problem here is, like these paddocks here had wheat growing on them last year. And that wheat went about six ton per hectare. Now that is about almost double our average, I would say. Uh, so what that does is all this stubble, all this stubble locks up nitrogen in the soil. Uh, and it's not available to the plant. So as this stubble begins to break down, it'll begin to release nitrogen back into the soil. But that's why we are hitting this so early with urea. We're trying to feed it because it's just struggling a little bit for nitrogen. And that's why it's a little bit pale in spots, perhaps not kicking along quite not as well as we would like. It's always the problem when you grow a big crop. The following year is always very hard to grow another crop because what our standard fertilizing rates and our standard yields and all that sort of thing a big year like last year just throws that all out the books so yeah that's why we are fertilizing now depending on how the year goes this year what we have applied now or what we will have applied with this urea and what we put out at seeding time 
if it was just an average year, we'd probably get away with it now. If we end up having two bumper years in a row, we're probably going to have to come back with more. But I guess that's a pro and a con of not double shooting your fertilizer, as in putting your seed and your fertilizer down a different shoot. Uh, in the uh, on the air seeder during seeding time you can probably be a little bit more selective if the year looks all right you know you can you can um, add more if the year's bad you can apply less fertilizer I guess the con is you know we got to be out here throwing fertilizer out really early um, and just sort of we've got to be right on top of it if you just put it all down the tubes during seeding time it's not really a concern you just it's in the ground it's sort of job done in a way you always have to do some sort of top dressing more than likely but it probably just gives you that little bit more laid back approach maybe all righty back to crutching Well, it turns out that they had finished crutching and they were shearing the rams. Now, shearing the rams is the worst job a shearer can have because the rams are big, they're aggressive, and they really don't like being manhandled. They're just about done in there. They'll be finished in about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Nothing left to do now but keep spreading fur. Alrighty, I have loaded him again, and I thought I'd show you guys. This is a prime example of the dangers of fertilizers in bins. You see how this is all hanging up, a big clump right here and all the fertilizers draining around it? Well, if you have a bin that's big enough and it hangs up like this and sticks together and then it suddenly decides to let go, that fertilizer can hit hard up against the side of the bin and there's been plenty of fertilizer bins that have been knocked over or fallen over from that. So that's exactly why I hopped up here to have a look before we get down too low. I've got my trusty scraper here. I'm just gonna break this up a little bit so that we don't get any nasty surprises or have the bejeebus scared out of us when we're filling. Better to break this up now than have it collapse and make a large thud and make us jump out of our boots. So lucky this little bin here is only like 10 tonne, but you can imagine if that was a 50 tonne bin, so five times the size of that, and you have fertiliser hanging up like that in there, and then it just lets go and just bashes against one side of the bin. It's, uh, it can be pretty dangerous. Farms are a dangerous place. Let me tell you that, there's always something that's out there to get you. But yeah, that's, uh, that's urea guys. It's like little bean bag beans. It's like little bits of foam. Now, pro tip for you guys, whenever you're working around fertilizer or grain, doesn't matter where that fertilizer or grain is, it could be over there on the ground and it's just like, oh, hey, look, a boot, I'll hop in. Always finds its way into your shoes. Get out. Now, the spreader driver just rang and told me that we've collected, well, I collected a pipe next to one of the, a water pipe next to one of the troughs when I was seeding and uh, as a result apparently there is a lot of water on the ground up near the trough. So I guess we better go take a look at that in a minute. Might have to shut a few taps off on, on some pipes so it stops running water out there. Then we're gonna have to patch it up. But anyway, these things happen. I have loaded him again uh, I'm gonna go have a look at this water pipe that I've somehow collected see what the damage is <laughs> can you see all the little white spots that's all the urea now I'm staying well away from this trough because apparently there's a lot of water here but let's see what the damage is Mmm. Whoops. I don't know, it's not like I really got all that close to the trough. It should be fine from there, anyway. It was dark when I was seeding this, so probably the, the pipe was running from under there. You can see it was sitting on the top, so 
Ah, well, whoops. Maybe I did get a bit close. Deary me. Hmm. I certainly did pick it up. Here is the devastation. <laughs> well, I spoke to Dad and apparently he's got some fittings and stuff. He's going to come up and patch that, um, that pipe up now. So I got myself out of that one, didn't I? Well, there goes the last load for the day. That has been a pretty successful day. Can't complain at all. I guess some more fertilizer tomorrow and uh, yeah we've only got probably about 40 hectares left to spread here at home so for the for the meantime there'll be some a little bit later in the year uh, so on the wheat and that sort of thing but yeah that's good we've got that out the way nice and early this year give those crops a bit of a uh, bit of a spruce up bit of juice to get them going um, yeah, just get them firing along a little bit so with that being said guys I'm just gonna leave this here thank you very much for watching the video Hope you enjoyed it. If you've been watching the videos and you enjoy them, please subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, really helps me out. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.